So um, let's segue to something we talk about maybe too much. <laughs> um, Dallas Cowboy fans are odd. Um, they're bizarrely dismissive of people that are really, really good Cowboys that leave. And then they're overly optimistic of average Cowboys who enter. I think that's called delusion. But it's so funny. So Amari Cooper leaves the Cowboys. And they're like, ah, no big deal. Ho home. This year in Cleveland, he had nine touchdowns and almost 80 catches in quarterback dysfunction land. He's one of the top 15 receivers in the NFL. Oh, no big deal. You guys ever looked at Dak Prescott's stats with Amari Cooper and without? In his career with Amari Cooper, he has a quarterback rating of 103. Without it, 92. It's a different quarterback. A quarterback to a B. With him, he throws for 297 yards. Without him, he throws for 223. He's a pro bowler with him. He's kind of average. He's Kirk Cousins without him. What do you mean ho-hum on Amari Cooper? You've never rebounded from that. Uh, Dallas loses offensive coordinator Kellen Moore. No big deal. Mike McCarthy will call the plays. The hell are you talking about? Kellen Moore took a season last year where Cooper Rush started five games. They were rebuilding the O-line. They had lost Amari Cooper. They had only the one legitimate wide receiver. And they were fourth in scoring. And now he goes to Justin Herbert. And then Dalton Schultz yesterday leaves Dallas, goes to the Texans. Oh, no big deal. We'll just draft a college tight end. What? What? Dalton Schultz has been Dak Prescott's security blanket. The last three years, he's had 17 touchdowns. Top five for a tight end in the league. Last three years, he's had 282 targets. Top four in the league. Last three years, he's had 2,000 yards. Top seven in the league. Dalton Schultz is an excellent, excellent tight end. A total security blanket. Amari Cooper's a number one wide receiver. Dak's not the same quarterback without him. Kellen Moore made you a top four scoring offense with one receiver, a rebuilt offensive line, tenuous admiration for the head coach. No Amari Cooper. And yet you're all fired up because Stephon Gilmore is coming to you. It's a fourth team in four years. He's going to be a 33-year-old corner. Fourth team's moved off him. Four years. And then Brandon Cooks are all fired up for. He's been traded four times. He's got a concussion issue. I talked to two GMs yesterday. They love Brandon Cooks. Great kid. His career gives you about 1,000 yards. Not changing outcomes. Not really a security blanket. Cowboy fans are odd. You're bizarrely dismissive of losing Amari Cooper, Kellen Moore, and Dalton Schultz. Those are Houston Texans just stole a really good tight end. Cleveland Browns stole a number one wide receiver. The Chargers stole one of the best, smartest young offensive coordinators in football. No big deal. We got Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore. I mean, they're fine. But I, I, Dalton Schultz in 60 career games with Dak. 15 touchdowns, 163 catches, 1,700 receiving yards for a tight end who you'd never heard of before he arrived there. He goes to the Texans. No big deal. We'll just draft a guy out of college. No, you won't because I got news for you. The Chargers want a tight end. The Lions need a tight end. The Jets may go after a tight end. A lot of these teams in the first round are targeting tight ends. And I think the Cowboys draft like 26. You're not getting the kid from Utah. You're not getting the kid from Notre Dame. And because of where your draft picks are, you, you're not going to get one of the top four or five tight ends. It's highly unlikely you will. And the, and the, and the sixth best tight end in college ain't close to Dalton Schultz. I'll tell you that. Cowboy fans are odd. I think it's called delusion. Bizarrely dismissive of really impactful players that leave and coaches and uh, overly optimistic about guys who are like on their fourth team in four years. I don't get it at all. So <clears throat> the free agency period in the NFL, it's a lot of hype and a lot of money. How many teams actually get better? About 33% of free agents make your team better. Uh, there are six teams, in my opinion, that are absolutely better today. So from the minute the season ended to this morning, I'm going to count coaching moves and free agent acquisitions and trades. Who's better today? Who is a better football team today? Let's start. I think Denver will be the most improved team in the league because Sean Payton and Nathaniel Hackett, uh, they've also uh, cleaned up their offensive line. Mike McGlinchey is a very good right tackle. Uh, ben Powers is arguably the best pass-blocking guard in the NFL. 
Um, I think Denver will look different, have a different sense of self, uh, will have an actual identity, better in clock management. I think J Mac and I both agree that Russell Wilson will rebound. This is not who he was last year. I think Denver will be the most noticeably improved football team in the NFL. I think you got to give a lot of credit to the Chicago Bears. Historically, I don't trust their front office and ownership, but DJ Moore was a really good get for a young quarterback. Robert Tanyan, the tight end from Green Bay, you take from a division rival. Those guys are nice assets. Now, Cole Komet is their top tight end, but Tanyan's a very nice, experienced number two tight end. Uh, They also got a bunch of draft capital to play with. They upgraded with two veteran linebackers who can play. The Bears are absolutely, it also allows them in the draft to go get specific players. I think the third team is the Detroit Lions. Uh, They kept Ben Johnson, the coordinator. They cleaned up their secondary that was a bit of a mess. Cameron Sutton at corner from the Steelers, real player. Uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson from Philly, excellent safety. So they keep their offensive coordinator. They have franchise momentum. I think they're going to be a noticeably better team and a playoff team next year. I think Miami, between getting Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator, he may be old school, he is a great defensive coordinator and Jalen Ramsey they're going to clean up that defense Fangio is one of those guys that may not be a head coach I hope fans understand how good of a football coach he is he is a great defensive coach so Miami cleans up the back end with Jalen Ramsey and Fangio they'll be a better football team I think Carolina Frank Reich it's good staff uh, they went out and upgraded Adam Thielen, Hayden Hurst, wide receiver, tight end. Vaughn Bell's a kind of a, a leader in the back end of the defense. He's a veteran, smart guy. Uh, they lost DJ Moore, so I don't love that. But Adam Thielen can play. Miles Sanders, experienced, big game back. Nice work here. And finally, the Houston Texans. I don't think I've ever said this before. I like everything they've done. I think they've been tremendous. Now, I don't know how good D'Amico Ryans is, so I, I'm guessing here, but Devin Singletary, Robert Woods, Dalton Schultz, Shaq Mason, Jimmy Ward, those are good football players. Every single unit has been better that they have addressed, and I didn't have a problem with them spending a ton on uh, Laramie Tunzel because I think he's an unbelievable player. So I, the Houston Texans, I know they get a lot of crap on this show and other shows. I think they've been terrific, and it's, they haven't been flashy. They went and got the right guys. You know, interior O-line for Bryce Young when they draft him. They got a left tackle. So when they draft Bryce Young, they got another running back behind Pierce. They got him some targets. Robert Woods is a guy. He will block as a wide receiver. Really smart moves across the board for the Texans. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.